Hey guys, welcome back to A Little Mountain Life. Uh, this video is gonna be a little bit uh, different, I guess. Uh, it's kind of a hodgepodge of some things that's been going on up here on our new homestead. I'm working with the chicken brooder, working in the garden and all sorts of stuff. So stick around and check out what we've been up to this past week. What did we just plant? Strawberries. They're hard to see. Can you show them? Show them here. So this is a strawberry. There's one. These were starts. This is a uh -huh. strawberry. There. So they're hard to see. Here's another one um, here. There's one right here. 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 And there. Yeah, we have a dozen of them. So we're going to plant some kale. So. Yeah, put it in the hole. Now cover it up like a nice little blanket of dirt. Put it to bed. There you go. Okay. Great. Alright, good night, baby. Oh, there it is. I need it to Alright, tuck it in. Nice and gentle. Bye bye, baby. Grow nice and big, baby kale. Alright, so let's water these. And then we gotta move more dirt into the other beds. Mommy, water! I found water! Alright. Grab the hose. Can you water them? Sure. You get a turn. Nice. That's good. And it was way past time to get these elderberry out of the solo cups. So we put them into the five gallon buckets with a little fertilizer on the bottom. We had to cut them out because we were messing with the root systems a little bit. But eventually we got them in and started looking good. So here we are, we have 15 elderberry plants, soon to be 14. Unfortunately, when I went to take this one out of the solo cup, the roots came off with it. Um, we'll see, <laughs> I don't have high hopes for it. But other than that, we have 14 very healthy looking elderberry plants transplanted from the red solo cups into the five gallon buckets where they should have enough room to grow for several, several months until we can figure out where we want to put them. All right, so Natalie is going through a little box. These are plants that her mom gave us. Yeah, these are Chinese chives. So they have like little bulbs. So I'm gonna, some of them are separated out like this. See, so I'm gonna take, yeah, and plant them in a row. And these are really good. You can eat them raw or you can cook them like scallions. They're just a little smaller. Oh, they really seem like they want to stick together. These guys, just put them there. Okay. Let's do that one here. These actually pretty closer together. I'm gonna tuck it in. My baby. <laughs> you have to be nice to them. Good night, baby. That's not how we say good night to you. Good night, baby. Good night. <laughs> Okay, so we moved as much dirt as we can for today. We have to go get more, but we have a pile of mulch and we're gonna mulch the ground around the beds to keep stuff from growing up. So we're gonna work on that. And we got this cool new wheelbarrow that looks like a race car. <laughs> it's like the Cadillac of wheelbarrows. Uh -huh. Are you okay? <laughs> what did you wanna say? This is the pile of This is the pile of mulch. All right, let's move it. And we're gonna put it on the ground everywhere, hopefully. Oh, we gotta pull that up back over. Yeah. Okay, I 
I stopped filming because I was trying to get this done faster. But um, I mulched here, all the way down here. We need to put a drain here so I didn't go all the way to the house. And got some done here. There's definitely a cardboard box under there because I was like, ah, screw it, I'm tired. Um, and mulched here, here. And we did some here and we moved Don's washing station for his trays over there. So yeah, we got some good work done today. We're starting to harden off these plants. How are you, Don? Good. <laughs> We're tired. It's hot. We've been working in the sun all day. We are so dirty. So I'm going to go. The kids want to make dumplings. So we're going to go do that. Huh. And we weren't the only ones busy up in the mountain. The power company is burying the power lines, which is going to be great. In the winter, we won't lose power as often, but it's been difficult for my recording schedule. I've been having to work nights, but hopefully it'll be done soon. All right, guys, so I have this closed off right now. It's the middle of the day. It's because the mama hens have been bad. Let me show you. So I was pretty happy with this brooder until I started noticing that the grown hens are packing at the styrofoam insulation and absolutely destroying it. They're about ready to make their way into the brooder if I don't fix it quick. So I need to take out the styrofoam panels. All right, so I was looking around for like some plywood, um, something that I could put up here that's more rigid than the foam. I couldn't really find any that was not anything that was like three quarters of an inch. I don't leave that heavy plywood in here. So the next best thing was this wiring. This is from a little kennel cage that I got for cheap a little while back because I knew I'd need some animal fencing to help maybe quarantine an animal or keep put up a temporary barrier. Anyhow, I'm gonna try to get this up here, maybe attach it to this plywood or maybe just attach it via bungee cord. And unfortunately it's gonna be way more cumbersome than the foam was to get in and out of here. But the important thing is that these guys are completely separated from the hens and that the hens aren't eating styrofoam. Yeah. This will have to do for now until I can figure out a better solution. And until I figure out a better solution, I'm just gonna have to keep almost stabbing myself with this cage when I try to get to the baby chicks. Speaking of baby chicks, they're doing well, for the most part. Um, we did lose a chick yesterday, unfortunately. Um, they have what's called pasty butt. A lot of people call it pasty butt. And um, there's different reasons it can happen. Um, but basically, as much as I tried to help it and help its pasty butt and clear the butt so it can you know, do its thing. Um, day after day after day, it was getting the same thing. So unfortunately we did lose one, but the others do look healthy for now. Keeping fresh water and fresh food for them. And we'll just keep pushing ahead. Hi, we're making dumplings. So how do you Hi, make- we're making dumplings. How do you make a dumpling? So, um, so first you get a dump, one of the rolls, and then you, Put, get water and put it on it. Just the outside, right? Just the. <laughs> <laughs> and then um. You, yeah, you don't need to put water all over it. Just around the edge. Sorry. That's okay. And then we put meat in it and roll it up. So we put meat. But we only put a little bit in it because. If it's just the wrapper, then it's just a noodle. Then you fold it all the way to the other side, like. And then you squeeze off. it, right? And if you want to, you put this roll it up. Evie, no, you don't roll it up. The thing is, you have to keep any water from getting in. So you gotta squeeze it all the way around. Can I like do that? No. And then we put. 
or something that we might break it. How's it taste? Good. And a little droopy with stuff in it. And this is one that Evie cracked up. 